Hey folks, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. Welcome to this week's episode of The Mortar Pod. It's kind of a unique one. Uh, it's the first one we've had uh, since started doing the video that Jake is not a part of. Jake is on vacation this week, so uh, Morgan Wentworth came in. I asked her if she'd do it, and she came in and guest hosted. She did a great job. I really appreciated her effort and uh, her information, too, because I've been sort of out of standard constructed since M14 landed, and she's been right in the thick of it. So she had some good information and uh, it was really cool to talk to her about the state of standard and to uh, do a draft with her because I know she would like to have some more drafting experience and I've certainly got plenty so it was cool. It was good, uh, good experience. Um, if you have not been to verencamp.com I suggest you check that website out v-e-h-r-e-n-k-a-m-p.com Scott Verencamp designed seemsgoodmagic.com, my website. He did a fantastic job. Check out his portfolio. Um, also, uh, contact me at mortarpod at seemsgoodmagic.com. Uh, I'd really like to hear uh, feedback from you guys. Um, I already have heard quite a bit about my sort of monocolor strategy in M14, and uh, people have made some fair points. I mean, of course, there's going to be some trolls and haters, but it's not a big deal. I, I appreciate the people that are actually trying to give valuable insight, and I appreciate it. Um, I don't claim to be any sort of expert, so I, uh, uh, I'm just I'm happy to provide uh, my experience with M14, and I love to hear people's feedback on their experience with it. So uh, please correspond with me. I'd like that. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at SeemsGoodMagic. Uh, that's just a really good way to see when we're live streaming. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central are the set times for live streams. I did miss last Thursday. I apologize for that. It's the first time I had to miss, but uh, I've got a big project I'm working on. I can't really reveal any information on it yet, but uh, I will let you know more as I know more. And uh, Okay, without further ado, enjoy this week with me and Morgan Wentworth. Yeah, I'll say. Red Deck Winds is looking in really... Burner, in the burner. Red Deck Winds is looking really good right now in Standard. And um, like you said, I, Burning Earth. I've been... Uh, I totally undervalued how good that card was. Right now. I think right now it's just in such a good yeah. spot. Because oh, yeah. everybody's running the Shocklands. Everybody's running the Innistrad lands. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> running the Corset lands. I mean, my Naya Blitz deck is literally a 100% non-basic land. I think... so. I think that's most people. It's pretty winning. Yeah, I actually saw, okay, so the Red Deck Wins match I saw on SCG Live this morning was, uh, it was versus John, like I said, mm -hmm. and it was uh, no first turn play. First turn Mountain, second turn Mutable, no play. We're talking Red Deck Wins. No yeah. play, turn two. And the John player has a Scavenging Ooze, turn two, oh, turn three Scavenging Ooze. So turn two and three Scavenging Ooze. Finally, the Red Deck Wins player, turn three, plays Chandra Phoenix, turn four, Burning Earth, Turn five Thunder Maw, and it was over. It was like yeah, he wasn't even he wasn't even quick about you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like no, it's, could, big, it's called Big Red now. Yeah, so do you like oh so do you like that version more or less than like well because he was still running like Cacklers and I don't know maybe he was doing more of like a, a mashup of the two. Well, my problem with Red Deck Wins has always been that it runs out of gas since the rotation of Shrine of Burning Rage. Yeah, like Shrine of Burning Rage was at least, great at least back they were on in the day. Plan, I remember yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but now you really can't, there's like no, there was no clock until we had like Burning Earth so that Red Deck Winds could comfortably play, uh, into Thunder Maho Kite rather than s sticking to like a bunch of two drops that they empty their hand right away mm -hmm. and then Supreme Earth just wrecks them. So I like it a lot more now that it has some sort of reach rather than yeah. just trying Huge to reach. swing with dudes. And uh, Chandra's Phoenix is acceptable enough. Yeah, it's, it's, what is it, is it a 3-3 three, three or 2-2? Two, two? It's a 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. Well, still, 2-2 two, two flyer hitting for 2 on turn 3. Now, did you go to this uh, Minneapolis standard yes, event? I did. Okay, so tell me a little bit about, because I've been out of the standard scene pretty much since M14 mm -hmm. dropped. 
Um, I mean, I've been trying to keep up with it, but I've definitely been drafting a lot of M14. I just haven't been doing the standard with it. So tell me what you're piloting or what you did pilot. I played Jund midrange. Uh, I entered it as just Jund because, like, there are people trying to break the metagame with Jedi Jund is what it's called. It's got um, white mana, usually just a couple of splashes, which I actually screwed over my opponent who was playing it. Because he had two Blood Barons, which is what the White Splash is for main. I see. And he had two Blood Barons stranded in his hands. No White Shock, no Farseek that game. So, like, he couldn't do anything against any of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Splash is for, like, Assemble the Legion and oh, I see. Uh, Sin Collector in the board. But uh, mine was Jund, and I really like Jund. It's got a lot of, like... It's got a lot of versatility in this format, especially with the addition of scavenging goes. Um, and then uh, one of the all-stars, I think, from M14 is Lightning Zombie. I agree. It's super popular, and somebody pointed out to me that Lightning Zombie is the only permanent color hoser. Like, you can uh, kill a Tidebinder Mage to untap your doom. Mm -hmm. You can... Uh, like yeah, what is something. it, Fiend Slayer Paladin? Yeah, you can, like, kill Fiend Slayer Paladin with, uh, like, Doom Blade or, or Doom Blade, yeah. yeah. And or is it, it can't be the target. It can't be, it can't be the target of red spells, red or black. Spells. So it can still be killed by red and black creatures. Yes. I think that's the difference. And like Olivia killed it, for example. Oh yeah. So, so it's like a major problem with it, but you know, flavor wise. But Life Man Zombie just exiles it. You get completely rid of it. And I played three from the board, and or no, I played two in the main, one from the board, and um, uh, Buck. He says that he's playing like. He's either playing three or four main. And he might be doing four main. It's really good. Okay. So, I mean, let's just talk about some of the targets. Yeah. We're talking Drag Tusk, Hunt Master, Restoration yeah. Angel. Yeah, Gore Clan Rampager. Yeah, Gore Clan Rampager is um, huge. What else? Boros Reckoner. And so it's good against the ag aggro decks. It's well good against like, the meta. Yeah. All of these cards are tremendously, <laughs> yes. tremendously powerful cards. Yeah, even in the mirror, it takes out Scavenging Goose, Drag Tusk. Huntmaster, and then, like, if you're playing Jedi Jun, Blood Baron, it's, it's really good. Yeah, and it's just creatures, right? Yes. Specifically yes. just creatures, and that doesn't make it uh, too narrow. That's really uh, remarkable. It's already worth a couple tickets even online. Oh, I'm, no, I'm imagining it's a few dollars, and, I, and it's probably five to eight or something. Or... I got a couple to test Jun with, and uh, it ran quite... It was like, I paid 20-some for, like, that and two scavenging horses. So it's that's not yeah. too bad. Yeah, but like now I have my life things on me, yay! Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's cool that mm -hmm. they panned out. It's a, I mean, it's a really efficiently costed creature mm -hmm. for black too. We've talked about it before, but black typically gets the most inefficient creatures because their you know removal base is so yeah. good. So to see a three three power for three mana with an evasion mm -hmm. with another yeah. ability tacked onto that. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, stuff coming together to make for a good card. And it trades with, like, Drag Tusks and a lot of the aggro decks. Now, how's so. the mana for this? I mean, this is, uh, this is like, one of the few uh, actual color-intensive spells in the deck. Yeah. So, were you were there problems casting it? Sometimes, like, we're, the list we're looking at has two Garrick Primal Hunter, as well as uh, Olivia, <laughs> Olivia Voldaren, yeah. whose actual mana cost is two black, or three black, red, red. Because you want to be able to activate her to avoid, oh, like, the turn, a yeah, or that's something. True, yeah. If you're playing Mizium Mortars decks, you probably want, like, two activations up. So you have to be really conscious yeah. of when you're playing her. So, yeah, Olivia is probably one of the more mana-intensive cards in the deck. And then Scavenging Ooze, the activation cost is green. And you want to be able to do that as much as possible, especially when your opponent also has one, so that you can kind of out-Scavenging Ooze them. Um, and so Farseek is probably the best card in Jund Rage. Do you, I mean, do you have to do, is it, like, pretty much base green, too, because you need the far seats? Yes. And then a problem you're running into, I guess, is, like, the lifebane zombie. Mm -hmm. Does it not matter if you play it on turn three, or? It's really good if you play it on turn three. I mean, do you, um, did you find yourself having a hard time casting on turn three pretty not, consistently, or? Uh, occasionally, and, like, I mean, really this, bad I mean, this deck actually is running colorless lands, too. It's running colorless lands. However, uh, it did switch to two basic swamps as well. It like, it oh, it added that for yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, so it took out, um, so now there's not the full playset of Ripbound Crags or the full playset of Dragon Skull Summits. Um, and I think Dragon Skull Summit is the right card to take out for this deck. Why is that? Uh, because it doesn't produce green 
and um, and when you're adding swamps, you can still have black on turn one, uh, which is necessary for if you're playing duress or appetite for brains in the, from the board. It looks like this one, the deck that won in uh, Minneapolis was doing duress out yep. of the side. Okay. Yep, and a lot uh, of double black spells out of the sideboard. Yeah, so it's yeah, a lot. Wow. So swamp is the right card to put in okay. because it can be fetched by Farseek as well. So if you're if you just need an extra black mana, for example, to I don't know, Golgari charm your opponent's burning, <laughs> um, your burning earth, then you can get a swamp. Okay. Uh, as opposed to like having a basic forest. I I had just forgotten that Golgari charm does take care of burning earth. So uh, does it? Would you say right now that the weakness of this deck, or at least the weakest matchup, is most likely the red deck, the current red deck wins that's sprouting up? I don't think so. A lot. Well, in my experience, most of the time, I it's a hard to come back from Burning Earth just because you have to have six life to cast the right test. Then. So then, at that point, it's not even. Yeah. So that, at that point, it's a lot harder to to race. Yeah. But if you have been able to meet your land drops, uh, take care of other threats beforehand, this is a very versatile deck, and if like main deck burning earth is their only threat you're going to have games two and three no problem okay yeah so um it didn't look like any red deck wins made it though really we saw some green red aggro but mm -hmm. um that list that i saw that was running the I, I mean if we look at be beyond minneapolis there was in this new jersey open there was some mono red so we can take a look mm -hmm. at at least the aggro and then big, big red, red down here okay so the mono red aggro is just Ash Cell at Emissary, Burning Tree Emissary, Chandra Phoenix, Hellrider, Lightning Mauler, Rakdos Cackler, Stromkirk Noble, Young Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I was very, I was a little bit surprised to see Young Pyromancer popping up now in, in a Red Deck Wins list. I wasn't actually uh, convinced necessarily that it was good enough, but yeah, I mean, alongside Hellrider, it makes perfect sense yeah. now, because it's like turn two Pyromancer, turn three, you know, Shock Pillar, Turn four Hellrider, and that's got to be lethal yeah. in itself. Well, the thing about this deck, as opposed to like Green Red Aggro, is it is running the shocks, the pillars, the Steering Spears, and the Brimstone Volleys. Green Red Aggro's only got Museum Waters. Yeah, I mean that's true. The bur the burn spells, because I mean we haven't even seen Brimstone Volley in forever. I feel like it, it definitely oh, yeah. wasn't in any of the Green Red Aggro lists. And uh, actually, Brimstone looks really good alongside Young Pyromancer too. Especially if you already have a token, yeah, yeah, just sacrificing a token to get in. A lava axe, and this guy's. Uh, I saw a lot of the decks uh, from what I saw the mono red lists were main decking the burning earth, so it's mm -hmm. kind of surprising to see this one uh, in sideboard. Well, this one it looks like their main goal is to burning tree emissary into young pyromancer and to just have all of that ready for a hell rider mm -hmm. on turn four. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, four hell riders pretty clear. Yeah. He definitely wants to cast hell rider on turn mm -hmm. four. 21 lands, too. Um, I, I really am happy to see Mutavolt back. Mm -hmm. Did you see a ton of it when you were in Minneapolis? Um, I saw it actually in control lists because that gives them the extra reach that they probably couldn't get from Restoration Angel or Augur Bullets just because decks like Jund, for example. My Jund was running two Mizium Mortars main, and that takes care of Augur and any amount of Restoration Angels. Mm -hmm. So Mutavolt is a good answer to Sorcery Speed Removal, like the Mirror, for example, in Control. And uh, it's just it's just really helpful to have that, if you can afford it, like Control, they just want to meet their land drops, and uh, they can probably afford having a couple of colorless, especially the America Control, which doesn't run the colorless and Apollo Dragon. That surprises me, but... Um... I guess that just shows you how good Mutavolt is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it always made perfect sense to me in Mono Red, because they just, like you said, it, you can get around your Supreme Verdict still, and like get in, you can get around your any sort of board sweeper, and still get that follow-up two damage. So um, Mono Red really gets an awesome position there, where it's like, they put you to two life, and mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter if you have the sweeper. It's exactly. like, I gotta do additional with this one now, too. Italian the one that can't. Go. Oh, fire fist. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.
<laughs> yeah, this deck looks quick. Let's look at the big red list. Let's take a look at that. See how much different these lists are. All right, so this one is Boros Rector, Chandra's Phoenix, Hell Rider, Thunder Maw. This looks a lot, a lot more like the list I saw. So then if this is Main Deck, Burning Earth, Brimstone Volley, Searing Spear, Bonfire, Pillar. He's got four whole lands more than the Red Eager list. Now, are any of these Jund lists that we've seen popping up, are they doing Bonfire? Yeah, oh, Bonfire is so good in Jund. Because um, they've already got the ramp element. Yeah, you at least want three. And four is great. Um, the problem with bonfire is if you have it in your opening hand, it kind of sucks against like control. But you, it's still useful to get rid of elves, for example. Three mana to get rid of all of your opponent's elves is really, really good because they really don't have a lot of answers to uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth once that's out, except for like two Putrefy or uh, Dread Boar, which is Sorcery Speed to get rid of Garrick. So. Bonfire is really helpful, and then against I found against like really grindy matchups, it's nice to have a way to go over the top as well. Yeah, definitely. So have you seen the classic? Uh, well, it's classic now. The Kibler versus uh, the guy in Taipei, China, where he just top decks the the, the bonfire. Well, uh, no, I it was like it was the only card. That <laughs> I have done that before. I, I can have... actually I can show you the video because uh, it's pretty entertaining but uh brian david marshall just did a an article on since we're you know the yeah. 20th anniversary of magic now i'll show you, i'll show you the video real quick we'll play it here all right and this is actually pretty fun because i've been in a situation where i was playing as for control i may have bonfired or boarded out one of my bonfires out of four and that was the only thing that could have made me win and i was down to one card i was like let me consult my discard board oh okay <laughs> So yeah, that was. And I think this, is always exciting. In this case, it was the only out, and you can see some clear disappointment here. <laughs> Just for <a> moment, <laughs> Kibler is not, not too thrilled about that. So uh, a lot of the comments I saw on that video were you should take a closer look at uh, Aaron Forsythe's face. Now Aaron Forsythe is standing behind him and you can see when he flips it, it's almost like a, a lot of people are saying it's like he's almost making the face like I feel like miracles were a mistake. You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't go down like this. Because oh, I, I guess the story of the match was that uh, Kibler was behind the whole game, mm -hmm. and he had just managed to flip it and stabilize, and it was going to be a next turn next oh, turn yeah. victory for him. So literally it was like the only card that, that could take him out was the bonfire. And I've heard a lot of complaints about this whole miracle thing. You know, uh, so I take it from you that you're not necessarily opposed to miracles. I have been called the bonfire queen it might have been sarcastic i mean it might have been sarcastic you play a but, lot of bonfire yeah <laughs> and um like last night i wasn't playing jen but i did have two bonfires that i sided in and they were both really good for me i think because it's mythic that's the sort of effect that it should have like if you look at the uncommon miracles like thunder's wrath it's not exactly like game changing but it is really cool to top deck it and so instead of playing Wild Axe, you're playing Thunder's Wrath for that, like, opportunity to pay one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think from a flavor standpoint, it's really fun. And uh, from a gameplay standpoint, it's not breaking anything. Back when there was Noxious Revival in Standard, it might have been breaking something, but that was three months. So I, I, I like Bonfire, and I like all the miracles. Okay. Now, I guess another question follow-up to that is, do you think that miracles were necessarily came out the way they were designed to be or do you feel like there were some uh unintended like consequences to printing them that they saw only after they started hitting standard or a constructed scene do you think when they were play testing them they they realized that that it was going to be there were some people that were going to find it annoying or finding a mechanic that was like 
wait a second, this is just pure luck. It's not even like a matter of, uh, it's not even a matter of skill anymore. This is the common, I guess, argument I've, I've found against these miracles is like, well, it can be one of those situations where you've worked for like five turns mm -hmm. to finally stabilize and turn the game around, and then your opponent just topics the bonfire and wins. And I guess it is specific to bonfire as well, too. Well, I think with bonfire especially, miracles are really a skill thing. You have to be aware that you're playing miracles, first of all. So you, like, look at your top deck before just putting it into your hand. And you have to, with, um, not, with Temporal Mastery, I think back when that was a thing in Standard, I was really annoyed by it. Um, with things like Entreat the Angels, that was a little bit harder to deal with. Um, yeah, but, I've lost to Entreat, definitely. Yeah. Early, early Standard Constructed. Yeah, but with Bonfire, in the early game, you have to make decisions based around it. Like, if you have three mana up, um, when you untap, do you cast Bonfire for two, or do you put it in your hand and play your land and play another thing? So it's not it's not a, a pure luck thing, because if you're playing enough Bonfires to have a chance of drawing one, you're playing enough Bonfires to have two in your opening hand. Yeah. So, so you're saying, like, it's sort of like a trade-off. Yeah. You're running, you're running the risk of having an extremely slow... Yeah. Sweeper spell in your opener yeah. versus like top decking late game potentially for a huge explosive yeah. win. Yeah. Okay. And you think there's enough balance to that where I do. I think that um decks that have the potential to be blown out by bonfire also have the potential to play around bonfire, for example. Like elves. Or counter it too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not like it's uncounterable if yeah. it's a miracle. Yeah. And I've been playing elves where at a point where I either don't draw a bonfire, or they have all of their archdruids, so I can't really play it. The same thing with, like, humans. Bonfire doesn't really affect them that much because they're getting so much value out of their blood artists. Oh, yeah. Because it might still be too punishing to even cast. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at this uh, elves list you're talking about. I think Jake and I talked about it briefly. Oh, well, it looks like it took second <laughs> in New Jersey, so... <laughs> That's convenient. Mm -hmm. So it's running Arbor Elf, Absence Pilgrim, mm -hmm. which is not an elf to note. Crater Hoof Behemoth, Elvish Arch Druid, Elvish Mystic, Elvish Visionary, Colonian Hydra, which is just a powerhouse beating. Okay. I finally have like learned. <laughs> I played against this and just got my ass kicked so bad <laughs> in embarrassing fashion. This this Colonian Hydra is the real deal in terms of efficiency. Like turn three Colonian Hydra yeah. must be answered. Yeah. Loxodon Smiter and Wolfer Silverheart also in here. Garrick, Collar of Beasts. Finally seeing this pop up. Interesting. Acidic Slime and Sideboard, String of Root, Tree of Redemption. Haven't seen that in a long time. Ranger's Guile, Garrick Relentless out of Sideboard. Okay. And it uh, should be noted also for the land base because there's so many one drops in here. The Gavany Township, I feel like, is actually a really important aspect of yeah. this deck, hence why it's running four copies of it. So the only white uh, it needs to cast, it looks like, is the Gavany. Is that right? And the Smiters. Yeah. Okay. That actually surprised me, too, that the Smiters were important enough um, to include as a two of on the splash with white. Well, you also notice that they're playing for Addison's Pilgrim, which not all, all Elves decks are playing. Um, so is this one relatively unique in that regard? Yeah, and I've seen, well, and then I've seen uh, Thalia brought in in the board. I'm not sure how effective she was, because at that point... <laughs> Where she was relevant in the game, she was just like an extra creature. But and actually, um, that's another thing about Thalia too. Against the Miracle Bonfire, she didn't really, she doesn't really do that much, you know. No, but, like I'll pay my one extra. But Loxodon Spider against Miracle Bonfire, or even Bonfire for one on turn three, is really good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Bonfire or Loxodon Spider is enough of a beating that I I think it warrants inclusion. I think this deck wins a lot with Colonian Hydra. I almost feel like it wins more with Colonian Hydra than it probably wins with Crater of Um uh, It's just it. It's remarkable to me, eight eight trample on turn, you know, four mm -hmm. in this case, because it looks like this deck pretty consistently has two ramp spells by turn three. Yeah. So we're talking turn three, uh, four Hydra. four turn, you know, turn four you're attacking for eight, turn okay. five you're attacking for sixteen. And you, yeah, I mean that's just that's out of control amounts of damage. Late game that's really relevant because uh, Gavany Township puts counters on things. And Colonian Hydra not only doubles its counters, doubles but its everybody else's number. counters too. On each creature you control? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that must be why it's mythic as well. They yeah. really did an over-the-top ability. 
That's insane. I just realized <laughs> that it's double on each creature you control. That's like unnecessarily That's, it's explosive fantastic. at that point. And uh, yeah, have you heard of the uh, Exava curve? Oh no! Is that like a is yeah. that like a jund well, well, haste no, list? Sort or? of. Yeah, it's um actually I saw somebody play it and it was he was very disappointed by it. But in Magical Christmas Land, uh, turn one elf into turn two Renegade Crisis into turn three Exava into turn four Colonian Hydra with haste. That's wings for eight. That also has. Like, I forgot that Exava gives haste too. <laughs> Jeez. And then Exava gets additional counters as well. And okay. even though that, that seems kind of color intensive with, like we talked about earlier, the mana bases were, you know, allowed nowadays, that seems like it's probably pretty reasonable. Yeah, and, uh, like, it didn't really work out that way in real life as much, but also... There's a potential. Yeah, and he was playing against somebody, like, the game that he was very disappointed about, he was playing against somebody who had a Selesnia charm in hand, the turn he dropped Hasty turn for a Colonian Idol, uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, wouldn't it double, though, and then you could... Yeah, so exactly. I exactly. see. Okay. So that's the guy playing the Exava deck was just like. And I noticed this is sideboarding Rangers guy. I'm pre presumably to protect that Colonial yeah. Hydra, especially since, like you said, once it goes into Ranger Selesnya Charm, they have to wait. So then they're waiting till the next turn. Mm -hmm. Then you attack. Yeah. Then they're like Charm. Then, then you're, you're like Rangers Guile. Yeah, Rangers Guile is explosively good. Yeah. Pretty good in this deck. So uh, Hydra, that one went under my radar. I was like, I guess really? I was, I felt way off on M14. <laughs> well, I undervalued Burning Earth because I was like, it looks like it's just, the reason I felt like it was strictly worse than Mana Barbs was because my theory was Red Deck wins that plays Mana Barbs in the past, they're just playing it because they don't care about tapping and taking the damage. Their priority is they're already ahead in life, mm -hmm. so there's no way that the player they're playing it against can come back. They're putting them in a point of no return. Yeah. I felt like with Burning Earth, it's like, well, they're get, what if they're running basic lands? You're just like, basically you're just isolating their mana base instead mm -hmm. of punishing their mana base. But what I didn't take into account is that mana bases right now are pretty, pretty yeah. are just like pure, pure non-basic. So yeah. it's essentially like a one-sided mana barbs. And uh, another thing is, red decks back in the day didn't really have the Burning Earth into Thunder Maw Curve. That, yeah, because the, the whole big red thing. Good, yeah. yeah. So now that they have something to curve into rather than just have it, like dropping and saying go, then uh, I feel like it's a lot better. So this deck looks fun. Is this similar to an Elves list you're talking about? Are a lot of them doing this whole Gavany Township sort of? Yes. Okay. Um, another Elves list, another Elves splash, I guess, was uh, Red, where you could have uh, Bonfire of the Dams, of course, and Keswick Wolf Run. But I think White utilizes the amount of creatures that uh, Elves has at their disposal a lot more efficiently. Because if you're relying on Kessig Wolf Run, you always have the potential of having your creature Selesnya Charmed or Shocked or any sort of removal spell or Doom Bladed. So uh, I think White is the way to go right now. For okay. Elves. See if any were in Minneapolis. I'm kind of curious. Here we go. See what this one's doing. Um, it looks like the same list. does appear, yeah, it actually looks like the same <laughs> exact, exact list. list. <laughs> Alright, well this guy obviously got some information there. So how do we feel about the new Garrick? I'm, I'm super surprised to see it as uh, popping up in a list over the other your other Garrick options. You know, like obviously, like you said, Jund is still doing the mm -hmm. Primal Hunter, which I feel like is the best one. Yeah, I um, love it. Now, I mean in Standard now, my favorite is still Wild Speaker, but Primal Hunter in Standard right now I feel like is the most powerful one. Well, this Garrick is essentially, for six mana, drop a Crater Hoof into a Swarm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So it just, like, cheapens your Crater Hoof a little bit. And if you, like, don't have a Crater Hoof in hand, it's draw five. I've seen the draw five cards, and it sucks to play against. Um, yeah, that's insane. So yeah. then it's, like, a lead the Stampede that never ends. Yeah. Plus it's... You know, for some reason, I, I almost thought this card... I think I thought the new Garrick was you reveal the top five and you only put one creature no. card. And it's so, not even green yeah. creatures. Oh, it's any creature it's card. any yeah, creature card. Kind of, that is kind of weird that it's, like, specific on which kind it gives you, but it's not specific on the kind that it'll let you have. Like, you almost would have expected for consistency yeah. that it was, like, top five, all green creatures in your hand. Well, like, this, uh, the first two modes remind me... Uh, well, all three modes remind me of cards. 
from magic, like leave the stampede, dramatic entrance, and then um, two wild pair. Yeah, wild something? pair. Yeah, yeah, wild pair. I was thinking tooth and nail, but it's wild pair. So uh, you're right. It looks like they just did a triple mashup yeah. of those three cards. Yeah, except the wild pair emblem is a lot less restrictive than the regular wild pair. Well, oh, because that was same mana cost. Yeah, or same energy. power and toughness com combined. Okay, and now this one is just any damn creature you want. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So did you uh, did you play against the new Garrick at all? I did. You know, uh, so you're talking about where the opponent drew five on you? Yeah, not at the, not at the open, but it was like uh, plus one, get Visionary, Visionary, Mystic, Archdruid, Pilgrim or something. Jeez. And I'm like, well, so you got blockers now, I see. It was not. That's tough. That's a wall of stuff that you have to get through. So it looks like this deck actually um, isn't even worried about losing card advantage. I mean, event if it mm -hmm. pulls its Garrick, it's like like a draw five, like you said. Yeah. Be pretty hard for a deck that runs thirty four creatures to ever miss. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, even the fact that he's getting bigger, working towards that emblem, he's he's doing something. So that's surprising too. I guess I I undervalued how the new Garrick was going to play. Um, do you think he's a mainstay for a while? I mean, well, not, we're going to be losing Planeswalker soon, but do you think... You're losing two mana dorks. Yeah, what, what are we losing? We're losing... Uh, Arboroth and Absence Pilgrim. Okay. We're probably going to get another mana dork in Theros, in Theros yeah. but you're also losing all the Sharks to it. Yeah, wow, that's a pretty important core to that. Um, you're also losing all the Visionary. Mm -hmm. I doubt this deck is going to stay as it is in its present form, like just switching out a few creatures. Yeah. Um, so I feel like Garrick is going to be less played unless we get a serious ramp spell. Like, Lay of the Land is not cutting it. Yeah, you're right. Where it's not even real ramp. It's no. just, like, uh, mana fixing, pretty yeah. much. So, unless we get some serious ramp in... You'd almost rather do, like, a, Abundant Growth or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. If, so, if you want a mana color fix or whatever. So, I yeah, so Garrick is a little bit... A little bit expensive... But if they're trying to go for huge amounts of, like, huge creatures, like Hydras and Theros, they'll probably add supporting cast for it, like Ramp. So Garrick has the potential, but it, with all the cards they're losing, it's going to need some serious support. Okay. Yeah, I think I could agree to that. I actually didn't realize how much of this deck is going away. I guess we should note how much of Jund is going to go away. A lot. <laughs> we're, we're starting to uh, get to that point. I mean, is it beginning of October? We're going to um, see the rotation. End of September, yep. Okay, so and, we've uh, only I've got about... i already said my goodbyes. Okay, so we're, I mean, we're losing Huntmaster. We're losing Thratic Tusk. Olivia. We're losing Olivia, Garrett, Garrett the, the Primal Hunter, um, um, Slip, Bonfire. Um, Farseek. We're oh, losing so, the most important card wait, in the deck. So Farseek's not in, oh, that's right, not in mm -hmm. Return to Ravnica. Okay. No, it wasn't Ravnica. So what What are the current ramp spells um, if we were to lose in a Strad block and all that? Lay of the Land. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. There must have been a significant one in Return to Ravnica block we're not thinking of. Mm. Or at know. least some sort of a ramp, like stick or artifact of some sort. Uh, the Chromatic Lantern, yeah, we got, I guess. we got Chromatic Lantern, and we got Dark Stealing it. Yeah. So, three-drop artifact. Verdant Haven, but I know that's not, like, super playable. Yeah, well, yeah we have Verdant Haven for days now, because it's been printed twice, and I guess... Yeah, they brought it back to M14, which so, makes me think people were at least, uh, positively accepting it in Limited, at yeah, the very least. Yeah, yeah. But not very, uh, definitely not constructed applicable, I don't think. Chromatic Lantern, I feel like, made a little bit of constructed play for a while. I'm not sure where, but... It was in a five-color deck that played, like, Supreme, Verdict, Rectos, Return, all the good stuff. Like, five-color Mythic or something. Okay. It was, it was cute, but it doesn't have, like, the best fast matchups, for example, so... What are we going to see uh, in, in your prediction... Once we're losing, because we're, we're not getting Corsair lands, I mean, we no. lost it. This is the first time I, I remember since I started playing competitively that we haven't, we've not seen a cycle of friendly or yeah. any sort of dual land in a Corsa. So that's super unique. Uh, we're losing all the Innistrad uh, enemy color fixers. Mm -hmm. So we're really just going to be left with the Shocklands. Yes. And s presumably something in yeah. Theros, but we don't know what yet. Is that going to, uh, how much is that going to, 
hinder people's uh, ability to make cool Jun decks or three color decks in general, I guess. Uh -huh. Are we going to see a lot of mono color? We might see more two color decks. We still have. Do we still have evolving? We don't even have evolving. Wilds. We don't have evolving wilds. <laughs> oh, um, um, I think or we're anything like that. Yeah. Two color decks, just because, especially since the core set didn't focus a lot on the interactions color. between colors. That's and, true. Like um, M thirteen had the uh, harbor bandit yeah, and like, like the, the the allied colored creatures. Yeah. Like Flint of Four being the notable one. The only one that really made constructed, yeah. yeah. And um and we have all of the Indistrad dual color ally or enemy color things. Mm -hmm. Um like for example Olivia or Huntmaster. But we're not seeing a lot of that. So unless Theros has a lot of multicolor interactions, which I don't think it will. And I think they, I think they even kind of hinted towards they wanted it to be more of a monocolor yeah. enchantment. It sounded like it was going to be more monocolor enchantment based. Yeah. Uh, set. So I think the most viable strategies are going to be two color strategies, which is why I've already stuck uh, switched to Domri Agro. <laughs> Yeah, so tell me about Domri. He's, uh, Domri's cool because he's like the new generation of Planeswalkers, <laughs> and we're seeing how they're sort of like finding a good, instead of making a, a Planeswalker like, oh, I should have this Planeswalker because he's just always good, mm -hmm. they're doing more like, they're making Planeswalkers with the mindset, this is good in this kind of deck, yeah. this is good in, and I yeah. like that, they're, they're getting more specific, they're not printing mind sculptor type planeswalkers anymore yeah. where it's like oh i'm in blue i have to play jace because he just wins games mm -hmm. it's not like with uh domery you're like i'm playing red green so i have to play domery it's, it's not oh, like yeah. that at all you really need to have the right creatures mm -hmm. for him to interact with i like domery a lot i like that he comes down on turn three or turn two off an elf and i like that he provides card advantage there are situations in which domery is not good in the aggro decks Domri's not good if you are the aggressor, for example, in an aggro mirror match. Just um, It doesn't put you far enough ahead yeah. ever. You never really get... I've heard it's like broken with Reckoner. I mean, I've seen some disgusting <laughs> Reckoner players yeah. where it's like, eat your 2-2 two -two yeah. and eat that guy over there. Well, I, yeah, it's. I'm not playing it in I'm playing in a green red, so I don't have Boros Reckoners. Mm -hmm. But being able to eat a blocker and then swing with Hellrider is pretty good. Um, yeah, so I, he is really good with Reckoner, so is Pit Fight, for mm -hmm. those of you looking for budget options. <laughs> um, <laughs> is Domery expensive currently? He's probably... Uh, he's like 15 bucks, I think. Okay. So, uh, I'd, I recommend picking him up because I feel like he's going to get a lot better after rotation, too. Um, so yeah, Domery adds a lot of reach and resilience to a deck that originally wouldn't have any, like, I got flooded a couple of times playing it. But I thought that was just bad luck or bad shuffling or something. But I've noticed he's he's kind of unique too because um, he's got like super high variance. There's actually times where uh, it's not that he's worthless, but he just ends up being worthless because yeah. it's not like his ability is a guaranteed anything. Yeah. But then alternatively, there's times where you'll be like creature, creature, creature. You do like three yeah. turns of his plus and get creatures every time, and you feel so far ahead. Mm -hmm. But you miss three times, and you feel like you just didn't it, like the mana cost. He was worth wasn't even worth it. Additionally, against Azorius Charm, it kind of sucks because like there are times where I'm like, uh, okay, land, I'll get that next turn. Swing Azorius Charm. Well, I guess I don't get my creature. Yeah, I guess that's true. So yeah, I didn't even realize that. So there's, although yeah, he can give you full warning if you're playing bonfires in the same deck. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so you know that you're going to, yeah, yeah, Miracle or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Domri is, and you don't have to reveal unless have to reveal, it's a, yeah. okay, that's good. So, like, if, if you're playing a deck that you know plays Lightbane Zombie, and you reveal a Gore Clan, or you see a Gore Clan Rampager that you want to be able to Blood Rush or play the next turn. You don't have to you don't even, have to take it. <laughs> you don't even have to take it. No. Okay. You don't have to flip it up. You don't have to take it. You can just be like, just put it down. It's okay. Yeah, that's a good call. So you could be like turn two Domri, look at the Gore Clan, and they're like sitting on, you know, two mana, one two, mana two, away two from black sources. Zombie, yeah. yeah. That's a good call. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. You can at least look at it. So like most planeswalkers, there's a lot of play available with Domri. 
probably more than some like Garrick, for example, um, just because Domri comes pre-built with at least some form of removal. Okay, so Domri's good. Um, we're losing some Planeswalkers. We're presumably going to gain a couple yeah. in Theros. I saw Elspeth. Oh, yeah, that's right. We see Elspeth's coming back. Very curious what they're going to do with her now. Uh, if we talk about the previous ones, the original Elspeth, pretty easily the best one. Yeah. Four mana, uh, four loyalty. And both of her abilities were up abilities. Yeah, so that was kind of, I mean, I think they've done that since then, but I can't, I'm sure they have, I just can't think of it. But she's constantly growing, and she works toward, and she's actually pre-emblem. Hers was worded originally for the rest of the game yeah. you get, and then they, since then they've errated the text and they made it, so you get an emblem now instead of that for the rest of the game text or whatever. Do you know where emblems exist in the game? I don't. In the command zone. Is that right? Yeah. So cards that interact with the command zone technically could interact with an emblem or not? Yeah, but I mean... If they ever wanted to. Yeah. So yeah, fun fact for you guys. Now, I don't even know online, have you seen... Uh, I forget now. I don't even know if I've seen... I feel like I should have seen an emblem online. What happens when you get an emblem online? Well, Where does it show it? If you're... if, For example, you emblem Soren, which is probably the easiest emblem to get. Yeah. Does it just trigger it and show it? It will show up, it will show up in the command zone. Uh, so there's like a separate little thing that there's comes up? There's a separate box for it. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. And those uh, those cards are kind of popular still. Those little, uh, those little emblems. People really dig those. Mm-hmm. And they're really cool looking, too. You got a face on it, and it's different than any other magic card you see. So. Have you gotten a chance to play uh, the new Duels of the Planeswalkers at all? Yes. Did you see some of the cards that are presumably going to be in Theros? Not really. I just play, like, little challenges. Jake and I were kind of looking at some that we think are probably going to be in Theros. A theme I've kind of noticed in the art, and I never noticed the art, but I noticed... <laughs> Um, they have this theme where it's like, you'll see a character doing something, and then in the clouds behind them, you'll see like a bigger Ooh, version of them. Yeah. So I'm thinking there's some sort of, uh, that's going to be some sort of yeah. theme permeating throughout Theros, since it's, you know, God-oriented. Uh, is it? I think it's Grecian, right? It's like a yeah, Greek, Greek sort of. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to, I don't know, it, you're going to see some sort of mechanic that's thematically related to gods. So I'm, I'm, in my, like, what I think they're probably going to do, and just based on the art alone. So I'm very curious what they're going to do with that. They said there was going to be a future-sighted mechanic in there. Interesting. Yeah. There was, there's so many left that they, because it seemed like every card in Future Sight had a different yeah. ability. So that actually is really hard to predict yeah, well, which like, one it would be. Um, there's one. Grandeur, where if you discard a card with the same name as a legendary creature, you get a certain effect. I remember that one. Yeah. Um, Do you remember the aura aura swap? Yeah. See, that's what I was. That's what I was coming to. I was like, well, it could be the swap one because because it's an, they've kind of hinted it's an aura. I don't even think they've hinted. I think they full on said it's yeah. going to be an enchantment based set. Well, if you look at like spirit safety, and uh, which is kind of like. Um, what is the one... Where they attack and they have to pay two yeah, mana. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you're talking about, that enchantment. But it's like yeah. the the new version yeah. of that. It's where they can't attack unless they pay X, where X is the number of enchantments you control, which mm -hmm. counts sphere of safety, so it's at least one. Uh, ethereal armor and uh, unflinching courage is pretty good just on its own, but mm -hmm. it's another sweet enchantment. So I think that would be interesting as well. So, um, why are we why are we losing out on Bant Hexburg? What happened to Bant Hexburg? It gets hated out of the meta. Okay, so it's, it, what was the what was the uh, main card that was able to hose it out of sideboard or main deck um, or whatever? Well, Ray of Revelation is what I use, but I don't know a lot of a lot of decks in that color combination right now. Um, actually, Naya plays Ray of Revelation. Junk Rights plays Ray of Revelation from the board. Not only for that, but it used to hit Ground Seal as well. I guess um, Golgari Charm yeah. is an out to Golgari at least the Unflinching Courage or something. It's what I do in Jund uh, oh, alongside Abrupt Decay. Excuse me. And uh, Barter and Blood is a big one that people have been picking up on. Yeah, in Jund too. As well as okay. Liliana. So. It looks like it was hated. Oh, here, actually, here's one. Okay, yeah. so there is one here. Yeah. 
I didn't notice this before, but uh, I, you know, I really liked the inclusion of Fiend Slayer Paladin. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really smart idea for that deck mm -hmm. because that deck um, kind of banked on the unflinching courage yeah. before to get the lifelink, and now they don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, it's they like, don't even have to play um, the Pilgrim one that gives lifelink when it's sold on it. Uh, oh, a uh, Near Heath Pilgrim. Yeah, Near yeah. Heath Pilgrim. They don't even have to play that anymore to have, like, a native white linker, which is nice. Plus, they get Glade Covered Scout mm -hmm. now in M14, a great addition to the deck. I mean, just another annoying Hexproofer to mm -hmm. deal with. Uh, but, yeah, I, I actually really did like the Fiend Slayer Paladin idea since it's got the built-in lifelink. I just feel like that's really good alongside yeah. your Rancors and Ethereal Armors. The rest of the six, I mean, 16 auras in the deck, it's very, very bold. And this one isn't playing the... Double strike, the one one double strike. Just the yeah, you're right. So I think that kind of has that been. I feel like that was the one that fell out of favor. It fell out of favor because it doesn't have any protection. It's just a uh, one one double strike for two. That fencing ace. Fencing yeah. ace, yeah, fencing ace. It can wear pants, but the double strike is not a good trade off for no protection at all. Yeah, it was always like two turn clock. Deal with it right now, or and once you deal with it. But it, it was really hosed to deal the, with, yeah. If it was dealt with, it really hosed the X-Proof deck. But if the X-Proof deck got the two attacks in, I mean, they were dead. It was pretty much impossible to come back from, like, a double Rancor or a Rancor Spectral Flighted. Uh, Hunting. Yes. Very, very strong. But now they've got this one of a Johnny Call of the Pride. Um, this, oddly enough, wasn't popping up uh, pre-M14. But now a Johnny's coming back, and suddenly Ben Hexproof is like, let's just toss it in as a one of. Well, yeah, because you can play it on turn two if you have no other action with an Absence Pilgrim and have a 2-2 two -two Absence Pilgrim. Just make it bigger, yeah. So it's cool to see a Johnny seeing a little bit of play. I mean, it's more play than, say, uh, Liliana the Dark Realms. Although I did feel like I saw a list that was running Liliana the Dark Realms. I heard exactly having sure a lot of black mana is pretty good with uh, Vector's Return. That's true. So, uh, you know, I'm a little bit surprised Rakdos Return is still good enough, too. Is that good in the mirror match? Is that... Oh, yeah. Usually, the first person who far seeks in Jund, the first person who Rakdos returns, and the person who sticks in Olivia wins. Okay. Those, Those are, like, are like the three key. requirements, yeah. which is why I slaughter games Olivia, and uh, I duress far seeks when I... Like, when I play the mirror. Yeah, I feel like getting the ramp in the right situation is devastating against Jun. Yeah, because... Since they are color-intensive. Because the more ma the more mana you have in the mirror, the more times you get to activate Olivia, activate Scavenging Ooze, activate... Or, like, just Rakdos Return for more, Bonfire for more. It's really significant. Well, I feel like we got a diverse meta here. It's looking really good. Um, even, maybe we briefly talk about the America Flash deck. This has been around, um, quite a while now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a, it's a great deck. I really like it. How, how does the Jun matchup fare against the Flash deck, the America Flash? It's not really great against, uh, game one, unless they don't have any sort of, like, real action. <laughs> I feel like counter spells are an actual good thing against yeah. Jun. Even though Jun, everything Jun plays is a significant threat, mm -hmm. they do, they, I mean, they're a little bit weak against uh, counter spells. Well, the, I personally run a one of Cavern in my Jun. Um, what creature type do you find yourself naming most typically often? Typically, vampire, vampire, because Olivia, uh, especially against Blue Eye Red Flash, which has the Snapcaster Mages, Restos, and Augers that I can feed off of, it's really, it's pretty good. Although Garrick is probably one of the best cards in that against that matchup. So you really want to resolve so, yeah, that, really and there's no way it. to really, really protect that. So either. like, a one way to do that is to let them counter your Thrag Tusk or your Olivia, and then resolve a Garrick the next turn because he is resilient to Supreme Verdicts. Um, however, like against Blue Eye Red Flash, even if I lose game one, I side in nine cards. So <laughs> what is uh, what's the sideboard against this deck? You have the um, underground connect uh, underworld connections, which I've never lost a game against Blue Eye Red Flash when I resolve it because either they have to deal with it and that means they're not dealing with one of my threats, or I just draw more cards than them. Uh, there is Golgari Charm, which regenerates my creatures. In the case of the Supreme Verdict, I have one off of them Supreme Verdicting, and I just regenerate and swing with my Thrag Tusk and Olivia. And uh, that also gets rid of, this one isn't actually playing it, but Assemble the Legion is Usually one of like the hardest board. things to deal with from or, Blue Red Flash. Okay. Um, and then 
can't remember all of them right now. Light Bane, I mean, feels yeah. really good for hitting those restos. It's, Even though they do get to, they get an opportunity to play the resto in response, it's just nice to force the resto. Yeah, it's, it's a, always well, good to force it. On turn three, them. you either get rid of a restoration angel or get information on them. Yeah, uh, a peak too. Yeah. Even a three minute yeah. three one peak would have been good. Yeah. So. so, and it has it has legitimate evasion. Oh, I also bring in Slaughter Games, Rectos' Return, um, stuff like that. Maybe Curse of Death's Hold if. I feel like they're playing, they're relying a lot on their Moreland Hunt. Okay. So. Oh yeah, this deck is doing one on Moreland Hunt too. All right. So yeah, it's. And encroaching waste. I was going to ask you about this. How do you feel about this card? The new, it's, it's technically it's like the new Tech Edge sort of, but it's yeah. obviously not as good. But how do, how does it feel? I, as somebody who plays a lot of non-basic lands, I feel like it's more fairly priced than Tech Edge because then you're actually getting to a point where your opponent may have four mana up, but it also punishes you if you're missing land drops, but it doesn't punish you if you're playing non-basic land, or if you're playing basic lands. So, I think that it's good enough to see play, obviously. Uh, it's good enough to see play, and right now, though, your best bet might be to just play Ghost Porter, <laughs> because... Oh, even, you like it more than the Encroaching Waste, maybe, right now, or... Because, like, if you look um, if you're playing a bunch of Ghost Porters, it's going to Wasteland at least a couple. That's true. I mean, we saw decks that weren't even running basic lands, yeah. right? So, yeah. so at it, that point, Ghost Porter is straight up just a... A Wasteland, yeah. Okay. Jund is playing... Like, the two Swamps are pretty good, but if I draw my two Swamps, I'm out of luck. So, um, and then, like, both Blue Eye Red and Esper Control don't run a lot of basic lands. If you look at this list, it runs one island. So. Yeah, I mean, you could hit up some lands hard um, in multiples of Ghost Quarters. I guess that's a good point. So Ghost Quarter may be uh, better now. It's just, where does it really fit into a deck, or what deck really wants to run it? Maybe this list? Yeah, I okay. I play Blue Eye Red Flash that play Ghost Quarter. Instead it of also gets, Okay. It also gets rid of Kessie Wolf Run when you need it to. Yeah, that's so. pretty important. And even the township against the elves deck oh, yeah. would be nice. Um, yeah. Encroaching waste, if you know you're going to be playing in a meta that has adapted to Ghost Border, is an option. It's just you need five mana to do it. Uh, how have you have you been drafting in fourteen at all? A little bit, not a whole lot. I have found that blue is really undervalued. Um, my favorite thing to do is draft all of the time ebbs and archaeomancers that I can get my hands on. No, I, 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 <laughs> I think uh, blue may actually be the most powerful color in M14, uh, just because they have the the opportunity, divination, archaeomancer, uh, disperse, mm -hmm. time ebb. They can um, really play it. Claustrophobia. Yeah. They, they gave, right now, blue, this is a recent power creep, too. I feel like um, since claustrophobia came out in Innistrad, Full on, I mean, claustrophobia is blue pacifism. I've called it that. Yeah. So, blue having access to, I call it hard removal, technically. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's times where if they can untap the creature, it's not. But for the most part, claustrophobia is hard removal. So, mono blue or mostly blue with a little bit of another color is very viable, I think. What you can do is play blue splash white for, um, what's the orb? Return target enchantment. Oromancer. Oromancer, yeah. With Oromancer and Pacifism. And you can lock down your opponent and play, like, mm -hmm. a big flyer. I, Sarah, Angel. I, play Sarah Angel. I can tell you some of the archetypes I've seen that I've lost against, um, that I've gotten a chance to play a little bit. Black, white, aura is very popular. It's fast. Yep. You, you, uh, have you, like, another good interaction with an Oromancer is the Quag Sickness, because mm -hmm. then you're, like, Kill your guy, recycle yeah. it, you know. Um, Blightcaster, yeah. gotten a chance to play him. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal four drop, very good. Yeah. If you have like four auras in your list, it's really all you need. I've done the, you know, pacifism that, kill that. Yeah. So once you start getting full value on Blightcaster, it really does swing the yeah. game. Um, even Dawnstrike Paladin is pretty good in that list since you probably are running Dark Favor mm -hmm. or Divine Favor or anything like that. Uh, so that list is popular. There's also the black red sack deck, and that's a lot of uh, active treason. Yeah. And then they're just playing like blood, blood baron, baron yeah. and um, even the vampire warlord, the five drop. 
Um, the Gnawing Zombie is an excellent sack outlet. Yeah. So I've played a Mono Black. Uh, I've gotten a chance to play Dark Prophecy, too. <laughs> really fun. You can make some really fun um, sack lists. Um, Alter Treep. That was actually the best one. That I, I think that might actually be the best one because you're like active treason, tack you with it, sack it, draw mm -hmm. two. You get a lot of value out of that one. I think previously I used to do the uh, Mark of Mutiny fling when that was a thing <laughs> yeah. in Corsa. But I, I think I actually like the um, Alter Treep one even more. I think I think that one's really good. So uh, we can move to a draft now if you're cool with that. Sure. All right, let's do a little M14 drafting. It's been a little while for me. Mm -hmm. I've been on a pretty bad losing streak. But a lot of people, a lot of I've gotten a lot of comments, um, which I appreciate, on um, that my, my sort of strategy of going pretty, trying to force monocolor is probably a little bit of a flawed strategy. I've had a, a moderate amount of success with it, though. I've done every monocolor except white, and uh, I've, mono white sweet. I've gotten to the finals with every single color, and I've also lost, you know, I've lost with monocolor before, too. But uh, mono green, I thought, even plays just fine, because yeah. you have uh, Hunt the Week, yeah. and you and get Hall it. Of the Night Tag. And Enlarge. Yeah. And Enlarge is, you know, a huge heavy hitter right now, so. Uh, Play I, that with yeah. your Deadly Recluse. Oh, definitely. And you can end up getting, like, three or four deadly recluses, too. But uh, I do I do want to be mindful of the comments. I think people are probably right that I need to be a little more receptive to having to play multicolor, you know, if you have to. Multicolor is not bad. I, uh, something I've noticed, I guess, with this core set that's really the reason that I started focusing on mon monocolor is you have the best spells being color-intensive spells. A lot of the most powerful cards in the set are required two of that color. Yeah. And even just playing a two-color deck, you can find yourself getting color screwed. Because I had like a sick-looking blue-red uh, deck that was like three Chandra's Outrage, three Archaeomancer. And that can be really yeah. difficult, you know? Even though you have this tremendous engine at your disposal, um, that can be too color intensive to make work. So I, just something you have to be really conscious of in this set. You really need to assign which color is going to be your main color mm -hmm. and really be conscious of taking uh, your second color, color intensive spells in your second color. Yeah. Um, have you drafted at all? A I little have. Bit? I have mostly drafted in real life. Um, what I, like, one time I ended up with a sick, sick red-green deck that was like Chandra's Outrage, Volcanic, um, oh, Geyser. Volcanic Geyser, uh, El two Elvish Mystics, Advocate of the Beast, three Marauding Mulhorn, nice. Shiv's Embrace. It was fantastic. Yeah, that Mulhorn is great. He's a really I think I really see strong. Ooh, pick. yeah. So we open Archangel of Thune. I'm so, pretty happy. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we could. I'm pretty happily snatching that up. I've actually seen, uh, I've had to play against Archangel of Thune, and, and um, I definitely got my ass kicked by it. But I saw it with a Fire Shrieker, and it was like, it was ridiculous. It was, you know, first strike you, pump. Don't strike again, pump. Very, very strong. We have um, a couple options for like things that come around too. Fortify is really good. Yeah, people, uh, people have had mixed feelings about that. I've had good, I've had some good, uh, good opportunities with it where it's operated sort of like a little white mm -hmm. overrun. I've also had times where I really wanted it to be something else, uh, a different type of pump spell because it was just the three mana. But can be too clunky to want to play to protect your creatures. I've noticed that. Um, this pack also has Mana Weft and Predatory and Sliver. Uh, Cursed Spirit. Uh, uh, yeah, Triple Sliver. Train Condor, Fro Frost Breath, Ranger so, Skyle. Yeah. I mean, we're clearly taking the Archangel, yeah. but there might even be like a blue-white flyer or white-black, um, depending if either the Train Condor or Cursed Spirit comes back. We'll see how deep that pack goes. Yeah. Um, okay. Pick two here. We've got the Master of Diversion, which I think is, is worthy of, of, uh, of picking. But there is also the Fire Shrieker. I the Fire Shrieker. It's uncommon. You can play it with any color. And like I said, it's, it's really good with, with Archangel, Archangel Thune. Thune. <laughs> Master of Diversion has been uh, it's, remarkably it's good really spell, good. too. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not opposed to taking the Fire Shrieker. Like you said, it's, it's uncommon, and it is sick with the first pick that we've already gotten. I'm usually not unhappy with Fire Shrieker. I feel like it's a very good... Uh, a quick cost. Yeah. It feels really efficient yeah. when you want to use it. There's a lot of times where you get to bust in for a lot of damage and then you get to even re-equip and block well. So yeah. Fire Shrieker can can definitely uh, give you the advantage you want. So Master Diversion and Shock in here as well. And uh, Frost Breath. Uh, all good. Um, we can still be patient and sort of see what 
colors are going to be available to us. I'd be okay with going black for Minotaurs, honestly. Undead Minotaur and Minotaur Abomination are both super duper, like, I mean, and, and I mean, because of how powerful Archangel is, we want to force it, but sometimes you can just be getting cut hard in white and you don't get that luxury, so mm -hmm. we'll sort of see what's what's up. All right, I don't this, think we're getting cut hard in white. Anymore. Not necessarily. There's a, So we've got Master of Diversion, but there's also Chandra's Outrage. Um, but this is, like I said, the dilemma. Like, Chandra's Outrage is definitely the better card. But just think how difficult it would be to make white-red work with just the Archangel and Chandra's Outrage. We're already off to it. If we were to pick the Chandra's Outrage, we'd already be on a start to color-intensive deck, which can be difficult mm -hmm. to get, especially since the fixing is pretty much non-existent. We've got Ingot, you've got Shimmering Grotto, yeah. and then I think I don't even know if there's Verdant Haven. That's it. A couple cards that stick out to me in this deck and this pack are actually Time Ebb and Divination. Yep, so Blue-White Flyers is definitely still a thing, too. And I'd be okay with taking a bunch of div Divinations just to dig for Archangel Thrun. Mm -hmm. Because it's just that good. But um, Master of Diversion, I think, is definitely the pick here. I think Master, yeah, because it, it keeps us on color, and we, we definitely want to, yep, and we want to sort of just remain in white and definitely cut white, mm -hmm. because we want to play this Archangel. So um, the Master is certainly good enough to play. All right, now we've got Griffin Sentinel, um, which I think I actually like more than the Show of Valor. Yeah. Griffin Sentinel has proven himself to be really good in this course set. Uh, he always is like one of those uh, just sort of uh, it's underrated card. Like, it's easy to look at him and be like, I don't get it, what's so good? But He's got Vigilance. Yeah, he holds down the fort well, flyer. and he gets to get in. He actually wields Fire Shrieker just yeah. fine, even though you didn't, don't get a lot of explosive damage. You get a good blocker and attacker, so. Yeah. Um, I'm cool with the Griffin Sentinel over the Show of Valor. Anything else reasonable? Disperse. Disperse, definitely relevant. Canyon Minotaur is certainly playable. Minotaur Abomination. Minotaur Abomination is playable. Um, he's certainly not like a high pick, but... But he's not um, bad at 4-6 for 6. For six. Yeah. No, in black. Especially because 6... Do you know of any burn spells that do 6 damage to a creature? Um, any 6 power creatures? No, not in this. I mean... Definitely takes multiple spells to really take them out, or Death Touch or something yeah. like that. Uh, okay, well now we've got Celestial Flare. I, like Celestial uh, Flare. I still have not played Stonehorn Chanter. I think he's probably okay. He is expensive, but he's a if you have the mana to sink into him, I feel like Vigilance and Lifelink is relevant. Uh, we're pretty much in mono white right now, so I feel good about taking the Flare. We're not really passing anything of substance. Blightcaster actually is... Is something, yeah, you know, is something I was talking about earlier too. Because in black white, you tend to get a lot of different auras. So black caster could be a potential route, but I think I like the flare more just because we're talking about hard removal yeah. uh, in our color that we want to cut. So as much as I like the black caster, pay no heat's okay too, especially the sideboard. I've heard that under under appreciated. And uh, and the elves deck that I saw play last night played, I think two pay no heat's just to. Counter bonfire. Okay. Something to keep in mind. All right, we have Oromancer here. We also have Griffin Sentinel. We might want to go multiples on the Griffin yeah. Sentinels. That's Just sort of stick with that uh, good blocker flyer plan. Especially since, uh, yeah, other decks are going to have a really hard time dealing with flyers. It is worth noting that we are passing another Disperse. So it could be indicative that blue is open. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, that That's a good point. Um, I th I think with pack one especially I really want to make it cut white. Yeah, we really want to make yeah. it clear to everybody that we're in <laughs> white. It does feel like there's a couple more white picks in here, but um, it's okay. All right, this is actually really nice. We can take another master. We can take the charging griffin. Mm -hmm. I actually like charging griffin. Um, I really do like the master too, though. So this is actually a pick. Uh, I guess I could negotiate on. I'm I'm happy with either one. I like what master of diversion, just because he's another early drop. He deprives other people of Master of Diversion, and Griffin, it, it's a 2-2 two, two for 4. It can block flyers, but uh, Grin, Griffin Sentinel, to me, is a lot more valuable, especially since he's able to attack into a Charging Griffin. I think I can agree with the Master here, just, just for the cost of what you get out of him. Mm -hmm. I, I, where he really shines is alongside, like, pacifism and mm -hmm. stuff like that, because you just pretty much make your guys unblockable at that point. All right, so the next pack we see Thunderstrike, Undead Minotaur, Suntail, Hawk, Pillarfield Ox. I mean, I guess Hawk is, is the most playable. It's certainly not a super exciting pick, but, I mean, it's fine alongside your Archangel. It's fine with the Fire Shrieker yeah. equipped. Yeah, so. that's what I was saying. It carries a Fire Shrieker. Yeah. 
Uh, Thunderstrike is a combat trick. It's that's fine, but uh, it's I like I like I'm okay with getting a Suntail Fall. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's so cute. And we're in prime position to dive into another color if necessary. Like Fortify does look good, good here. Brave definitely looks good too Brave as a means looks really to, good. to. I mean, since we're essentially mono white, I mm -hmm. could see that. Um, I definitely see why the Fortify would be good in here too, since we have the double vigilance guys. But otherwise, uh, we could go into blue white flyers. There's yeah, we could also see Coast Drake is perfectly uh, acceptable. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Brave and Fortify. I take the Brave elements. All right, let's try it out. You know, I haven't really gotten a chance to play it, and I feel like if it was going to work anywhere, it would work here. Um, okay, it does look like we're getting past significant blue still it's on the wheel, so we can take the Frost Breath here pretty happily. Mm -hmm. uh, Frost Breath has, this is actually one of the best um, places I've seen it. Has it only been in Corset? No, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, because that was the Frost Titan. Oh, okay. Right. It was, okay. Uh, I feel like it's it's played very well in this in this course. That's a very strong card. All right, we wield the Show of Valor. Uh, there's also Dark Favor in here, which is a significant uh, black spell. But I'd be okay with taking Dark Favor, just because uh, it deprives the person who picked up Whitecaster of another aura. And if we end up going white-black... It's yeah, a good spell to I have. I think the only reason I'm taking show is because I've really come to respect uh, combat tricks like it in white, and there's not actually that many. You have Fortify, Show of Valor, and Pay No Heed, which is pseudo trick, but not like an amazing one. Uh, I think yeah. I might just take the waste here. Let, I take the Tome Scaler. I almost, uh, I, I guess if we're cutting blue, maybe we would just want to. I just don't want to have to be the person who gets milled out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, usually Jace does the job pretty good, but we're going to, we'll take yeah. the Pano here. We'll just take the Pano here to get the, it's kind of good to see the white picks yeah. that late. So it does look like white has been open for us, which is really nice considering our first pick. But, uh, so we're going to focus fire on white being our main yeah. color and we're still willing to explore what we want our second color to be. Pyromancer's Gauntlet? Oh, right. Yeah, I've actually played it and, uh, a little bit disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was... I was joking. Um, uh, Blessing is in here. I've heard sort of mixed reviews on that. Um, it, it's one of those cards where you'd really expect it to be good in mono white. It's obviously best in mono white, but it's just a little bit too uh, mana intensive to be good. It's essentially like it ends up being fire breathing most yeah. of the time. I'd rather not take Blessing over like the Hunt the Weak or the Advocate because Advocate is just a really solid creature. How do we feel about Scroll Thief? I kind of like him alongside your Masters. It's, it's a good yeah. opportunity to get in. We already have the Frost Breath. Um, I, I guess I focused on Hunt the Week because it is pretty hard removal. Mm -hmm. You can get a second activation off. It works well with Griffin Sentinel. It works well with your Master of uh, Diversion. I feel like we didn't see much green in Pack 1, That's though. That's true. So if we take the Scroll Thief, we're pretty safe on getting blue cards. Yeah, I feel like we were seeing relatively late blue spells. Someone could have hopped into it by the end of the pack, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, I, and especially if we end up getting any of those uh, train condors, yeah. it's just a... Yeah. I re actually have yet to really get a chance to do Master and Scroll Thief, so I'm kind of excited for that interaction. Okay, wow, Banisher Priest. I think that's definitely going to be our pick, but um, a notable picks otherwise, uh, another Disperse, Messenger Drake. Mm -hmm. Uh, Root Wall of Giant Growth and Green are very good. Charging Griffin, Water Servant, I like a lot. Woodborne Behemoth, plenty of good picks yeah. in here. Um, Banisher Priest, I think we're just going to slam because it's, it's so good. Yeah, so good. We have a lot of two drops. We um, do. We're getting a little bit, a little bit clunky up in the three drops. I'm trying to think of good white one and two drops. Um, there's Soul Mender. No, I don't think <laughs> I said good. I don't know. Are yeah. You Messenger yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> I guess that's kind of funny, actually, the Soul Mender like Arcane Hulk Finn. That's true. Uh, <laughs> what are what are good bears in white? Why can't I think of them right now? Uh, oh, uh, this uh, the white uh, sliver, the two drop, the yeah. two two. Yeah, sliver? Yeah, he's, he's actually fine. Yeah. Uh, there's not that many, I guess. Or uh, One drops, we're looking at, like, Suntail Hawk is the best ones, but... All right, pretty happily taking your Banisher Priest there. There's a good way. Well, yeah. Wait, two drop. <laughs> you know, uh, Imposing Sovereign, I'm, I'm actually, usually I'm, I'm thinking this card's, it's not that it's bad, it's just kind of subpar. Yeah, but but uh, in this case, this is actually a deck that I think can run it to good effect. Additional Otherwise, Seacoast Drake, too. 
But I um, like imposing sovereign. Yeah, let's try out the sovereign. Let's play him. I have I have want her. I want him or her to play better than I think she'll play. Also, there's a staff of the Sun Magus that might wheel. Yay! Yeah, I don't think we're picking that one. <laughs> I've actually yet to play. The, okay, any they're of not the, any of the they're staves. Not terrible. I just don't like it that much. Yeah. Uh, see three. Uh, also, or time, or, or time up. Yeah, I think I'm. I mean, it's another three drop, but um, time up alongside your master of diversion sounds like it's pretty brutal. If they have two blockers and you're like, well, let's set you back a turn also, and get in. we're passing a lot of auras. And the Glade Cover Scout went really late, so it's not going to be attached to a Hexproof person. So it's a great way to, like, at least slow them down a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, Bounce in, in this set, because there seems to be a good aura strategy, Bounce is phenomenal. And I guess Time Out to a certain extent is kind of Bounce. It's even more brutal, but... Uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty happy to oh, take yeah. time up here. I like the Seacoast Drake too, and it is a two drop creature which this deck I feel like would like. Yeah. But um time up is removal that we seem to be a little bit short on mm -hmm. right now. And just considering how bonkers it is alongside Master, I feel like that's good. Imposing Sovereign is actually very good alongside Master Diversion yeah. too. I just realized that. That's, <laughs> that's a very nice interaction. Okay. Can we take um, that, yeah, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to play this, and I want to read it. As long as your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Okay. And did you see the other part? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, whenever one or more creatures control attack, you gain life equal to the number of... Wow. No, <laughs> that, um, with your Griffin Sentinel. Yeah. This card's actually very playable. Yeah. I don't really have a problem with that card. And Archangel of Thune plus Path of Bravery is a combo that I've been wanting to try out. Archangel of Thune with Path of Bravery. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's... I'm uh, liking all the white rares we're getting, by the way. Like, Yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's that's a good sign. White is definitely open. Um, as much as I'm I'm willing to go in a second color, we may be able to go mono-white. I guess we were just talking about it. I'm like, well... And I've never done mono-white. Yeah, that is interesting. We do have a Brave Yell. I'll tell you, yeah, I'm, I was just going to say, I'm a lot happier that we have Brave the Elements if we end up going mono-white. That's phenomenally strong. It's definitely where it shines. Mm -hmm. I used to play White Weenie and Standard Constructed and when Brave was in uh, Zendikar. And it was, you could just do ridiculous things. <laughs> you didn't even have to play. I just played like crappy two drop, two one flyers. And it was really all you needed. Um, we can take another show here. Okay. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. Since we do seem a little bit removal light, Show of Valor doubles as just a good, you know, yeah. Anti your Chandra's Outrage, uh, anti your Flames of the Firebrand, anti your Shock, stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's fine. All right. Um, we did get the Blessing back, but there's also Capacian Knight, which does fill there's the... There's also Advocate of the Beast still in here. Yeah, that is surprising. Um, but if you want to take Capacian Knight, I understand. I think I want to take the Capacian Knight only because I, I was kind of uh, saying we were low. I was I was having a hard time thinking of the good two drop creatures. Yeah. And uh, first strike, you know, it's relevant. He's he's he actually plays pretty well. Mm -hmm. I've seen him take games over. He turns off the uh, marauding Mallhorns pretty effectively mm -hmm. for four mana. Yeah. You know what I mean? Forces them to attack into the first strike. Yeah. So he can do some really cool stuff, and uh, I've liked him. I guess in multiples he gets a little bit weaker, but. Hey, I see our pick. Um, yet another Griffin Sentinel, or are we looking at the Angelic Wall? I like Griffin Sentinel all day. Okay. Especially yeah, I think, with I agree. Path of Bravery. <laughs> yeah. And Flyers are just good. Yeah, actually, the Path of Bravery Griffin Sentinel seems like a really good plan to go down. Yeah. Because it's relatively low investment. Um, this is the pack that we originally got back. We can take... A third show, we can also take Siege Mastodon. Solemn Offering um, and Blessing. I think we probably don't need the Blessing, even though, like I said, if we were going to play Blessing anywhere, it would be in the White Weenie deck. I just don't think. It's probably, for the most part, a fire-breathing type effect. Yeah. Um, so Show of Valor, Siege, Solemn Offering, I'm happy with. Offering, we would be sideboard only. Show, I guess there's still a chance I could play three of those comfortably if we're going to do Mono White. Mm -hmm. um, Siege, Siege Macedon's playable, but just not... It's not Super as impressive exciting. as our other five drop. And, all right, well, this is kind of nice. We yeah. finally get a four drop. We and a, wheel a charging griffin? That's yeah, pretty good. That okay. is really good. So, I mean, we've definitely indicated to our opponents that we're white. Mm -hmm. They've respected that. So. Uh, <laughs> or maybe we're just taking all the good ones so they don't bother. <laughs> it's a late giant growth, too. So, yeah. um, so blues or green still. Relatively open, I would assume, but uh, at least from this direction. Hey, all right, we okay. can take the soul mender yeah. now. Um, yeah. If you if we were gonna play him anywhere, I would say it would be in the Path of Bravery the Archangel of Thin deck. deck, yeah. Um, ideally not playing him, but in a pinch, I'm willing to 
experiment a little bit and try them out. Now I think I'm just going to uh, let my opponents take the, uh, I mean, I could hate a shrivel, but, uh, I don't think, well, it actually, actually I guess it does kill. <laughs> take out a I'm couple guys. Sovereign, Capuchin Knight. Uh, I actually don't like hating cards um, until, I... until pack three, because I just really want, I want to give my opponents other colors so they stay out of mine. That's, like, been sort of my new draft strategy. But at this point, I guess we can can hate a few cards, and we may still be in blue. We don't oh, know yet. We got a ground shaker sliver. Yeah, oh, awesome. I, I'm going to actually let them, let them take that. <laughs> well, just, it... it Usually when you let them last pick a color, it really tells them go ahead and go in green. I'm not going to I'm not going to fight you with green. Cuz ground shaker in general is pretty, you know, mediocre playable. Hey. All right. So we open pacifism. Uh door of destinies is our uh rare. We probably have quite a few humans, believe it or not, but definitely I don't not like enough. Door of destinies. Um, we actually have yeah. four griffins. Door of destiny actually has some value in uh in real life more so than it has online. Happily taken pacifism. We already said we were a little bit short on removal. Mm -hmm. Our creature count is relatively good, considering we are only running. We only have one blue creature right now, so really Can we're sitting. Can we take Merfolk Spy? Uh, you know, I have <laughs> yet to. I think actually I Please played. <laughs> I had to play it once because I was just forcing mono blue, and I ended up a little bit short on playables. But I wasn't too happy about it, as you might imagine. Young Pyromancer also in here, very strong. We just talked about that. Deadly Recluse, very strong. Burden yeah, pretty happily taken pacifism. It's a remarkably strong green removal. All right, domestication in here. Um, this card's worse than I even thought it was. I thought it was actually four you could still uh, take, but it's actually only three and less that you get to retain control of. Yeah. So um, it, not so good. It may still be the pick in here just because we're short on... Other things to do? Yeah, and I guess at the very troll least... Hide. Take troll hide. Yeah, I don't even know if we're, I don't even know if we're in green. But or, it's, mean, a, it's one green. I don't think we're taking the angelic wall either. Trollhead is one green to play. And I guess it is good with the sentinels. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely good with the archangel of Thun. Mm -hmm. um, our blue, though, how good is our blue? We have a time of frost breath and scroll thief, which are, you know, that's that's relatively... Then I'd rather take archaeomancer than domestication. Okay, because, what are our current uh, spells we can recycle, though? We only have the... Show of Valor's... The uh, Time Ed, the Frost Breath. Okay. I guess I can get on board with that. Uh, we may even pick up more in this last pack. All right. I guess I can agree with that. Domestication has kind of fallen short of of good for me. A um, lot of good red cards in here. We've got Chandra's Outrage, Regathe and Firecat, Act of Treason. We've got Death Gaze, Cockatrice, Hunt the Weak. Um, definitely good in our off-color spots. Uh, sensory deprivation actually looks reasonable in here, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess we still have a few ground creatures, so it's a little bit worse. Could also take the steel form sliver, which is just a three mana two three, which I actually think Our is fine. Our three mana spot is still clogged though. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much else. The only reason I'm not super keen on sensory deprivation is we very easily are working towards mono white. It appears. So we really want to make sure that we're getting just the right quantity of creatures and other spells. And although we do have a pacifism, and uh, yeah, uh, pacifism isn't even that great with Oromancer because it requires their pacified yeah. creature to die before you can get to do it. I'd rather take Hunt the Weak. Really? I, I like Hunt the Weak. But what if we end up mono white? But what if they play Hunt the Weak and kill our Archangel Thun? I don't know. I'm sorry. Come on, man. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> Until like a cord or another Archaeomancer. Or and there's also time map. Or time map. Yeah. Take the time map. I think I can get on board with that. Angelic Accord looks like it's going to be difficult to make work unless we either get a bubbling cauldron or or a trading post or, an, or, trading post or enough creatures to consistently turn on Path of Bravery. Archangel of Thune, it can also note, turns on our Angelic Accord pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is an option. I don't like playing it unless we're guaranteed to make it work. I really do want to take the claustrophobia, but like I said, we're just, we're pretty color intensive. We're pretty much white. So I guess I'm, I'm more on board with the, the mm -hmm. time ebb here, especially since you get some more potential Archaeomancer mm -hmm. uh, fuel. And time ebb is just a good spell in general. It looks like we can probably, not likely, but possibly pound out enough creatures early where time ebb can come up huge. But yeah. uh, I would like to see a few more two drop creatures or spells. All right. Now we get Celestial Flare, yeah. So I think we're just going to slam that. <laughs> 
this time I'm guys I'm seriously not actively going for mono white just sort of yeah panned out to go in that I'm direction I'm him to go white green because troll height is really good troll height is good I mean celestial player is definitely the pick here but um, you may have been right about trying to pit pick hunt the week early. Mm -hmm. I'm still kinda happy with the blue picks we ended yeah. up with though. They're they're certainly yeah. Time of is... satisfactory and playable. Here's that Sentinel Sliver. So I think I we just I think we just want that because I want to have a good amount of two drop creatures or early and creatures it's in general. Better than Coral Merfolk. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I guess especially since we have the steel form sliver. Um alright, well here's a pick. We could take the Angelic Accord and consider it. I don't think we're playing quad show value. That seems too much. And I don't think we've got enough value to make Hive Stirrings work. I tend to not like that card that much. Or Sliver Construct for that we, same reason. We have so many quality three drops that I don't like. And if there's three drops in here, except for maybe like taking a root walla away from somebody and hope, or an Advocate of the Beast and hoping to wheel and Jellica Corn. I mean, if you hide our blue, we probably actually have a deck. In fact, we do. This is actually a 23 card deck already. So why don't we take the Accord okay. just in case we want to make it work or have a way to make it work. All right, we have Divine Favor and Dawn Strike Paladin here. I think we want the Paladin too. I agree. It works with the Path of Bravery and it has good interaction with the Archangel of Zoom. So it seems like it's fairly obvious. Actually, Divine Favor also interacts very well with both of those cards, should be noted. If you want a Griffin Sentinel to be big, you got it. But I'd rather have another creature than a, a potential 2 for one Dawn Strike's good too. Yeah. Some people have been a little less impressed with him. But uh, he's he's uh, he's done some work for me. He's he's done some work for me before. We can take Angelic Wall here and just sort of sideboard into it. I don't know where exactly we'd sideboard into it. I guess if I guess aggressive decks. Yeah. When we want just more blockers. All right. I guess we can take more walls. I may actually hate this pack. Um, we probably don't need a second wall, so I might just hate the Tenacious Dead. That's a pretty which, good idea. Which which has had some really good interactions with Blood Bear and, and uh, Alter's Reef mm -hmm. and uh, Dark Prophecy stuff like that. Okay, a lot of stuff that's not on. Let's just hate. Uh, I've actually gotten hurt pretty bad by Fire Cat before. Spore Mound's good too, but we have a good amount of flyers, so I'm a little less concerned Did about him. Did you say you'd been burned by the Fire Cat? Yes. I've been burned by the Fire Cat. Hey, death. Soul Mender! Alright, we can go a little yes. bit deeper on the Soul Mender. I'm not even sure we're... We'll have to sort of figure it out, I guess. Soul um, Mender, all the way. We can take it. I mean, it's definitely more interesting in this deck than the Siege Mastodon would be. All right, at that point, I guess we we hate the Shrivel, yeah. and they can have Zephyr Charge if they want to play You're that. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> All right, so uh, Mono White, first time doing it. Pretty interesting. So this is uh, uh, the first time I've gotten to do the full-on... Uh, uh, this will be all five colors that I've done mono color now. I actually feel pretty comfortable where we're at since we got the Archangel of Zune, who's uh, presumably still worth quite a few tickets, right? Or I hope so. I mean, it I hasn't. It's not in. It. It's not in standard <laughs> constructed, really, is it? Mm -mm. But I've seen decks play with it, and when it is good, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying to think where it would even fit in standard constructed right now, or what deck would really, you know, benefit the green the, white. Yeah, I mean that Elves deck. I feel like. Since it's doing it with Gavany Townships, it presumably could do it with Archangel too. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to getting the double white would be a lot more difficult in that deck. Um, you might be right. I mean, it's like supposed to be the new Baneslayer Angel, right? <laughs> it's nowhere near Baneslayer Angel. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but it can I, get there. I see what their 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 thinking was. Um, this is twenty six. Uh, Maybe you cut one of the show though. A lot of mm -hmm. Are we gonna go uh, that deep on the soul menders? It is a question. I mean, yes. it, it does yes, interact. See, um, I guess a, a shortcoming of this deck is even though we ended up with adequate removal, mm -hmm. our card advantage is pretty lackluster. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're doing Angelica Court. That's just a little too do nothing for. We just don't have the interactions yeah. necessary to make that work. So you do need brave. Definitely playing brave. We'll we'll be on board with our one drop creatures for now. Let's just take a look at everything in a vacuum and sort of decide from there. I like to split it up into creatures and spells. And I do that too. I copied you. Look at look at what we're uh, working with. Yeah. All right. So this is 24. I want that Fire Shrieker too. Um, okay. So let's set aside non-creature spells. That three-drop spot. A lot of three-drops. <laughs> 
which is actually a little bit of a concern. It, it slows us down quite a bit. So we need to make two cups. Currently only have 16 creatures, which uh, I probably don't want to go any lower than like 15. Um, you might, I think we, I think you're probably right. We can cut a show of valor since our removal suit beyond the show of valor is pretty adequate. Um, our, can we appropriately go 16 lands? I almost feel like yes, because we top out at five and it's literally two spells. Yeah. And we're running one drops. Mm -hmm. I may be comfortable I'd going be okay 16 lands. Me. Yeah. Um, and we have no, no color issues, uh, with this deck. <laughs> yes. Some people might say, um, maybe we just want to go blue instead because we do actually have, or blue with the white, I mean. Because we have the two time ebbs, we have the scroll thief, so I'm interested in seeing commentary on that. Is our our two time ebbs a frost breath, a sp frost breath, and a scroll thief, and our and our Kaomancer worth divvying up our mana base for? I don't know. Because I will say, soul menders and Suntail hawks are straight up lackluster cards. They're not I that good. They're okay. Nobody removes soul menders. They incremental value over time. They're okay. They're just. They happen to work. They happen to work <laughs> synergistically well in this deck. I will. I will say that uh, the reason I'm intri I'm intrigued by them in this deck is the path of bravery and the archangel soon. Um, are they good? I don't know. Probably not. But uh, they're they're probably playable in here. We don't look very. See, my another problem my, uh, issue I have is we don't look that aggressive. We look a little bit slow to beat people down, and although we do have probably enough removal. Um, I would have liked to have seen some heavier hitters, I guess. So maybe a Siege Mastodon was in order. I'm not sure. Mm -mm. Um, I don't like it. I like the Master still a lot. That's a good plan to go down. Mm -hmm. Banisher Priest. Master so. Diversion also makes us really resilient against a Blue Flyer deck. Because then we can get in with our Griffin Sentinels and our Archangel and our Charging Griffin. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that. Is Suntail Hawk looking? I mean... I don't like Suntail Hawk. Just it's a one one flyer. You can play it on turn one. That's about as good as it gets. Yeah. I mean, but like you said, with the Soul Mender, it's incremental value potentially with that Suntail yeah. Hawk if you can That's get in. That's true, if you have like a bunch of just like not flyers on the other side. We look a little bit uh we look a little bit low on the, the damage end, but uh I still think this is probably pretty playable. And like I mean an Archangel soon just takes the game over, so yeah. Uh, that's kind of the reason I want to do 16 creatures, even though we are playing some lackluster ones. Uh, I think this is this is probably fine to run like this. The Brave is actually really good in here. There's mm -hmm. a chance we have five creatures out, and we're just like, oh, okay, we win. Yeah. So this will be interesting to try out. Uh, first mono white. Hopefully Archangel of Thune. I imagine it's mm -hmm. not worth as much as it used to be, but uh, okay. it's probably still okay. Um, Otherwise, just keep it until Theros, because it's going to be good. All right, so if you want to watch the matches for this, go to seemsgoodmagic.com. Uh, contact me at mortarpod at seemsgoodmagic.com. Jake and I uh, have already put up the set that we produce, Kingdoms of Korthan, and uh, gotten really? some positive. Yep, so nice. if you haven't seen it yet, I'll have to show it to you. Um, all those cards are listed, and we're still willing to do some sort of, uh, you know, mock-ups on those or... I mean, uh, trading, if, if you think they're overpowered or underpowered, just let us know. We'll at least reevaluate them. Um, so, mortarpot at seemsgoodmagic.com or comment on that blog entitled Kingdoms of Korthan, spoiler. <laughs> um, Twitter, follow us, at seemsgoodmagic. That's where you'll see when we're live streaming, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. Last Thursday, I, I admit I missed. That was my first one. Uh, I tried to indicate in the title that I was missing it, so I apologize for missing that one. I'm going to try not to miss very many in the future. Uh, Morgan, thanks a lot for guest hosting You're today. Welcome. Jake was out of town, so I really appreciate you stepping in. And... I have been told that I am sort of like Jake. In what way? Very feminine. <laughs> now it makes sense. Now it makes <laughs> sense. Uh, but yeah, you you have a lot more knowledge on Standard Constructed at the moment than I do, so I appreciate the insight. Um, all right, I think that's going to do it for the podcast, so I'll see you guys later. Bye.